Well, there's caution that the government's Fit for a Better World report may take a bit slower to get off the starting blocks. A broad snapshot that has been pro, uh, provided by ANZ's Agri Focus report in August shows that it is going to be a bit of a mixed pathway ahead. Joining us is agricultural economist Susan Kilsby to talk through this. Susan, that in the next 12 months ahead, it's not an even playing field for our primary sector commodities, is it? I mean, it's going to be it's going to be quite tough going. I mean, we're we're selling product into into a, a world that's very depressed at the moment, so it is it is hard going. So while our commodities are, are generally you know holding their own and doing okay, um, it, it's it's going to be quite challenging um, for the next 12 months or so as well. So in terms of prices, though, on a 10-year average, how are things holding up? Well, a lot of commodities are still sitting around that around that 10-year average or, or above. Um, most of our horticulture products have, have done pretty well, um, particularly earlier in the season. Prices have come off a little bit as we're sort of moving through into the, the latter parts of our apple and, and kiwi fruit sales. Um, but in terms of um, dairy, uh, you know, our, our milk price forecast for the season ahead, um, our, our forecast is sitting around $6.50. You know, that's not too far off the 10-year average, you know, slight, slightly above, although there are a few downside downside risks there. Um, if we're looking at sort of our proteins, our meats, um, you're, you're generally not doing too bad at the moment. But once again, um, it's there is you know there are a few risks there. We're finding the cheaper products are a little bit easier to sell in the markets than the, than the higher end products, which tend to be consumed at the restaurants or um, or on cruise ships and and or you know by by tourists really by that by that real service sector. So that that side of things is is hard going um you know venison um is, is really hard going at the moment because because that's so connected to that service industry um and then you know some products are sitting back a little bit we've had um, a real up and down season for our, our our forestry sector um you know log exports have been all over the place in the last 12 months but generally a bit depressed and, and I can't see that changing in a hurry because it's so linked to you know how economies are going it's so linked to housing and building and and, and um, that side of things and we're also seeing a lot of supply of um, timber coming in from other other regions into our big market which is China um, there as well so that's you know making that challenging um, but there's been a few upsides you know some of the products that are more linked to, to health um, are doing well so so we've seen, you know, kiwi fruit, particularly the gold fruit, doing doing really, really well, and and there's been a good, you know, uptick in demand for the likes of velvet, which you know um, people see as is you know something that can boost your immune system. So in the current you know COVID COVID nineteen environment, um, those sort of products are doing are doing reasonably well. I found a really interesting reading about the roller coaster ride for cheese, um, and and the U.S. government. Uh, potentially backing cheese, but then pulling out of it. What was the story there? Yeah, so what we saw, first of all, when, when COVID hit, there was an absolute surge of milk in the US and that was at the peak of their season and they really struggled to, to process. Um, prices absolutely plummeted um, and, and got down to really, really low levels. Um, but then the, then the government kind of stepped in and it has said that they were going to buy up excess um, dairy products for their um, to feed their needy. Um, and, that, um, and then they've sort of extended that program a few times and adjusted it. And every time they've made sort of a, a a bit of a change to it. Um, we've seen, you know, prices shoot up or, or move around again, and and cheese prices sort of went to record levels. So went from incredibly low levels to record levels. So absolutely throwing things around in that market. Um, so farm gate returns were looking really dismal, and then you know now they're looking um, a lot lot better. So um, that that sort of supporting in that market, it doesn't it doesn't really flow out to the um, the wider global markets as much, but it's certainly supporting. The, um, the internal market in the US for cheese, which is sort of keeping milk production ticking along over there. Um, but, you know, who knows what will happen once um, once the, that program sort of comes to an end. Um, at this stage, it's looking like it'll run sort of through um, to the end of the year or at least past the election, um, and then we'll see what happens with it after that. Are you concerned about the reflection on farm gate prices and um, the discrepancy between what we're receiving overseas for our red meat and what we're getting here at home and particularly um, schedules to farmers because uh, I know Mel Crow at AgriHQ is. 
Yeah, absolutely. So there's, you know, there's overseas market prices have been weakening, and um, particularly for those um, higher end cuts. But even even the lower end cuts have been coming back, um, more so in lamb than beef. Um, but but both markets, um, what we what we're seeing is that the, the prices that our processors are paying here um, at the farm gate level can't really be justified by what we're seeing in the in the overseas markets. Um, and we're also seeing that stronger New Zealand dollar, which isn't helping. Um, helping the cause either um, so we're really expecting once we sort of get into the peak um, of the lamb kill after Christmas that you know six dollars is probably going to be more the mark than than the prices that we're currently seeing um, and it already now we haven't seen the, the the height of the winter premiums that we normally see but um, you, you couldn't justify even the current prices really by where the overseas markets are sitting. Now there's a lot of our country going into horticulture and a lot being planted out and of course uh, uh, Apple and pear market set to be a billion dollar market as their focus. It's looking like that's well on track and uh, those particular returns are quite secure. Yeah, the the industry has certainly been growing. We saw a big, you know, we saw a surge a few years back, so we're still seeing some of those plantings coming on stream now, um, and we're seeing it, you know, crossing over from some of the more traditional varieties like Braben into into these sort of higher returning um, fruits. We're also sort of seeing more fruit um, heading towards the Asian markets over time, um, and a little bit less dependence on on the European market. Um, and we generally generally um, get better prices in those Asian markets. So that, so that's um, um, all quite positive. Um, but, you know, just like the kiwifruit industry, they both do require the sort of the investment and the infrastructure side of things as well. So we also need more pack houses and cool stores and we also need the labour um, to, um, to for those horticulture crops because they're a lot more labour intensive. So there's, you know, there's a few, um, I guess, a few barriers there that's going to, you know, have to be overcome for that growth to happen. We can't, you know, we can't just keep... Um, it, you know, it, it can grow, but it's going to have to grow at a sort of a steady pace um, rather than an explosion into um, into horticulture. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, Susan, I'm asking some of our guests tonight, did you watch the rugby on Saturday? Were you happy or not with the result? <laughs> To be honest, I didn't see all the rugby. We were out camping at the coast, nice. and um, although there was, um, so I didn't get, I didn't get to see it. So um, yeah, I'm not going to comment too much on 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 the result there. Close, <laughs> it was close. Let's just leave it there. <laughs> hey, thank you so much, ANZ's agricultural economist, economist, sorry, Susan Kilsby, joining us there. This is Sarah's country.